you can tell with the level of cruelty that this wasn't random at all. What's up y'all? It's your girl B Octavia and I am back with another video. Welcome to my channel. If you are new over here and maybe you watched a few videos, welcome back. Thank you for coming back. My name is B Octavia. I'm from Washington, D.C. And this here is my channel. I am an entrepreneur. So, Today's video will be me talking about a unsolved murder from 2015 and also the importance of not losing hope. Hopefully, you know, this case can be looked at a lot deeper and the family can be one step closer to justice. Now, this week will be kind of eventful okay i have a lot to cover i have a z to talk about i have sammy the bull versus michael francis like it's it's gonna be a lot to talk about but i definitely wanted to get this out the way just in respect for a family that was deeply affected and not so much as torn apart but their family will never be the same from this and they do deserve answers. So, without further ado, let's get into this video. This is a story, a situation, a very, very sad scenario of three lives cut short in New Orleans. A man, woman, and her unborn child were gunned down in December of 2015. And like I said, this still is an open case. These still are unsolved murders. Now, I came across Breon Stewart's story through Instagram. I was on my explore page and I happened to see like a maternity picture of two young women and they looked a hell of a lot alike you know you just come to the conclusion real fast that they twins because they look that much alike and i thought about how cute that was like both of them was pregnant it was like a beautiful picture so i go down to read the caption it was a lovely post about her sister and how much she misses her from that you know that she's took a loss and I was thinking like, wow, both of them are very young. Like what could have happened to her? But I'm not the type of person that is going to comment that on anybody's posts. You know, I feel like it's very rude and insensitive and nosy. Even if you want to know and you being nosy, don't say that. You know what I'm saying? To any family member, to any like it's not going to get a great response you know and it is looked at as distasteful it just is you know but in me being curious what i did was i searched Breon stewart's name and up came the cause of her death and not only her death her unborn child as well as her boyfriend it's an understatement to say that I was deeply saddened by reading up on the circumstances of their deaths. 23-year-old Breon Stewart was nine months pregnant, expecting to deliver her newborn baby in less than two weeks. Instead, someone or some people had other plans for this small family. Breon Stewart was found shot multiple times inside a car with her boyfriend, Lionel Delpit III. He was also shot several times with both dying on the scene. Breon was obviously pregnant, right? Toting a huge belly, just like her twin sister. Although they didn't plan it, the twin sisters got pregnant around the same time and were able to grow their children together, as far as the womb goes. But what I'm getting at is, you can tell with the level of cruelty that this wasn't random at all. It's nothing a pregnant woman could do 
to make you feel fearful for your life if you know if anybody was to say self-defense for you know people just say stupid shit right and especially if she not toting nothing which you know i wouldn't advise for no pregnant woman to even even take that risk but we ain't even talking about that right perhaps a person that simply didn't want to see them happy or didn't want to see them together period Something I did want to mention before I get into different angles that, you know, could be possibilities. Maybe the detectives, you know, they need a fresh outlook, different avenues, something, you know. I've outlined those, but before I do that, I did want to mention breon stewart's boyfriend's past okay he was convicted of heroin distribution in 2012 it's unclear of the time that he did you know what i'm saying or exactly when he got out but it's fair to say that by 2015 you know he was on a good track because this happened december of 2015 so you know what i'm saying he was on the right track as far as getting out of the streets, not handling and dealing with drugs. You know what I'm saying? He found a very great job. He was working a very great job as the big chef of the Black Feather Mardi Gras Indian tribe. We, of course, don't know the process that he was in, how hard it was for him to fight certain temptations of the street life. We don't know what stage or mental state he was in as far as th his street life was concerned, if he was all the way done with it, but he was at an amazing point of remaining focused and being excited, getting prepared for his baby boy to be delivered. So let's talk about life before Breon even stepped in the picture. You know what I'm saying? Breon, her twin sister and her mother, they lived a great life, you know. Breon and Brittany, they have always soared academically. I believe I read that Breon was actually the valedictorian at her high school. So that's what's up. You know what I'm saying? Like, it takes a very strong woman to keep young girls focused. You know what I'm saying? It's, it takes a, some people say it takes a village, but what if you don't have a village? You know, you got to be as strong as a village. And I believe that, you know, having children that sprout to be such, such amazing and bright young women that, um, you are as strong as a village, you know? And from what I read, also very unproblematic. Breon's family was puzzled on who could be capable of doing this. This murder occurred December 15th, 2015, just days away from three huge milestones. Number one, Breon Stewart having a baby boy. Number two, Christmas with their new bundle of joy and New Year's, um, and celebrating the New Year as a family. The night of December 15th, Breon Stewart was spending quality time with her sister, and I believe her sister had just had her baby, which is a baby girl. Breon, big belly and all, was smiling at the foot of her sister Brittany's bed just before leaving with her boyfriend. Just minutes after leaving her, her sister's side, Breon, her unborn child in the womb, and her boyfriend, Lionel Delpit, were gunned down outside a New Orleans apartment. I wanted to speak on this case because I don't want any case to be forgotten right along with anybody else, any other family that struggles with finding answers. No family should go years without anything, without any movement, without any progress. Perhaps it's certain questions that detectives haven't asked, asked themselves, about this murder and murders like this. I'm going to go back to the fact that it seems very personal to make sure that both of them were hurt. 
You have to go the extra mile to do so. Letting off multiple rounds firing directly at them with nowhere for them to go, right? That can't be any type of self-defense. That can't be any type of mistaken identity. It's a pregnant woman. It's no way that you mess that up. You know what I'm saying? So right now, I'm going to give some possibilities. First of all, I never want to bring up a person's past and make it, you know, a reason why. Especially a victim. But we do have to be honest about this one. You know, number one, I feel like something could have happened within that, that time that he did for heroin distribution. You know, they wasn't saying how many kilos that they found or anything like that. But maybe he owed money on that. Maybe he was working towards paying it off, whatever, and it wasn't fast enough for whoever just a possibility you know i'm just gonna get that out the way so number two could it be fueled by a jealous ex-lover of Breon's or of lionel's and number three in a world dealing with heroin and things like that when you deal with the type of women that are associated with that life as well, they aren't all that wholesome and they have multiple ways and avenues and lanes to go in to be able to set you up for whatever reason they may have. Um, and by you, I mean Lionel, you know what I'm saying? Or both of them in this case, tragically. Number four. Is it possible that Lionel was living a double life romantically? Now, I'm reading this book and I'm not trying to give it away or nothing like that. But it was something like that where a girl was messing with a man and she messing with him. It's not as consistent or whatever. And then when she gets to a point where... She tell him exactly what she wants. She want a family. She want this. She want that. He come out and tell her that he got somebody pregnant right now and things to that nature. You know what I'm saying? So it's very possible. Shit, even I've been through something like that where I found out a guy was living like a double life or triple double life, you know, or however many he trying to do. At one time, you know. Number five. Has Breon had any long-term relationships before before Lionel came into the picture that could have been triggered by their happiness and them starting a family? Number six. Was there any rumors or truth to certain rumors of Lionel being a snitch in his heroin case? No disrespect just a possible you know people get paranoid that's the only reason i put that down i respect the victims i respect his progress in life you know what i'm saying and i hope that he progresses in the afterlife to get to heaven you know um i don't never want nobody to think that i'm being disrespectful or nothing because that's not the case but Number seven, was there anybody mad about Lionel changing his life around? Was there anybody mad about him not coming around the block no more, you know? Perhaps he was somebody's supplier in the past. I'm trying to give certain avenues, you know, in respects to the victims, but this gotta be something personal. It has to be, because it just... If, if you just doing that to be jumped into a gang or, you know, something stupid like that, that just would. And that could be a possibility as well. Like, New Orleans this is a very beautiful place. But unfortunately, and I, it's been like that for a while. And I can say that for my city. I can say that for a lot of, um, I can say that for a lot of cities. But you know it's very toxic you know and some people that's the only way they know how to live survive take their last breath is toxicity you know a person 
might have an OG that they look up to, but you looking up to the wrong OG, and they go out and tell you to kill some people to prove something to them, you know? It's situations like that that piss me off. It's situations like that that I don't even want to be a scenario, but can very well be, be the case, sadly. If not personal, they were targeted for some type of reason, you know. It's a dealer from a couple years ago that you knew about that had bankroll. Maybe don't got it now, but you don't know that. You would try to rob them and things like that, but they didn't say that it seemed to be any type of robbery. So I, I, I don't know. It has to be a reason why or several reasons. I pray that the New Orleans homicide detectives get a lot closer with this case and a lot of unsolved homicides in their city. And for the Stewart family and families that are grieving and mourning and their family members have been taken in such a violent and unnecessary way, just know that I'm praying for you, you know, my mom lost her first child to gun violence, so it's something that I can see has affected my family and has affected my mother deeply. And just because time has gone on and the years seem like they just trickle by, don't give up hope and don't give up faith that your loved one will receive justice. New Orleans ended 2021 with 200 plus homicides with the murders increasing astronomically from the years prior the cases being solved dropped including the solve rate for four non-fatal shootings and that percentage was only 35 percent of those get solved so i'm not gonna lie the, the detectives have a lot of work cut out for them you know and i'm praying for them too it's not an easy job but i feel like maybe to have younger people in there you know what i'm saying not to say that they don't i i haven't stepped foot in one but um maybe they need you know some younger people who have experienced dating a person who has a who has a past you know dating a person who has a past and what can come with that um again i'm not blaming but we do have to be honest about the life that we lead and just because a person does time for something it doesn't mean that it's necessarily over with it could be over with and it could have been over with in his mind in his life and he moved forward everybody don't think like that you know and it's sad to say but i feel like a lot of great young men who are finally ready to change and finally wanting and seeing change and you know taking those steps you know things like this happen i think that a part of changing your life is completely leaving what you knew you know and starting completely over you know because a lot of people not gonna forget they not and it's the saddest thing, you know, it's your life, it's your decision. And it's sad that people be wanting to make those type of life-changing decisions for other families, for a whole demographic of people. I mean, you know, hopefully me talking about Breon Stewart's story um, and her family's story it will will get in the hands of the right people you know what i'm saying that's what it's all about so I'll leave your thoughts below i want to hear what y'all have to say in the comments definitely sound off and i will see y'all in the next video